Hello and welcome to the next video in the past paper practice series. In this video I'm going to go through the mark scheme and the examiner's report, so how you can use both of these documents to really boost your past paper practice. So the mark scheme and the examiner's report for the past paper that you sit should both be used when you are doing your past paper revision. Make sure that you download these for the correct past paper when you download the past paper just to save time going back and searching through all of the archives to find them. So the mark scheme then has obvious benefits. You can use it to check the responses that you gave when you did your past paper. You can see the correct responses as well as the process that you might get to to get to your final response, especially in things like calculation questions or questions that require you to kind of go through a process before getting to your final answer. As you go through doing multiple past papers, you obviously get to have a look at lots of mark schemes. Make sure that you pay attention to all of the keywords that come up in the mark schemes when you talk about different topics within your subject. You might often read this as a fussy mark scheme where the examiner wants you to give certain words when talking about certain subjects. And it's up to you whether that's the case, but to be honest, at the end of the day, you need to know these key terms and technical words in relation to each subject. So it's worth getting into a habit of it when you're doing your past paper revision at home. The same thing goes goes for methods of working out, so there might be a certain format that the examiner wants you to put your calculations in, or a certain way that you want to structure your response to essay questions. Whatever that is, the mark scheme will be consistent from paper to paper, so once you start getting a sense of this for different styles of questions, and again this goes back to command words, you can then carry that forward into any other exam from that exam board that you take. When you're marking your past papers, make sure that you take time to have a look at the mark scheme as a document in itself, so don't just use it as an aid to find what the correct answers are for your past paper. The best approach is to compare the mark scheme to each question, so that you can start to identify these consistencies from paper to paper. So when you're going through your mark scheme, you might notice that there are certain notations. These are used by the examiners to kind of make the marking process easier. So M1, M2, M3, those stand for the marks that get allocated in the answer. It's very likely in longer answers that there will be multiple correct answers, more than there are available marks, so these alternative answers will be listed with bullet points. Any words highlighted in bold in the mark scheme you need to pay particular attention to. This is important when you're marking yourself because I think we tend to be generous in our responses and the way that we mark our responses, so really pay attention to bold words. For example, if you are marking a question and in the mark scheme there's a bold AND, so it has two points connected by a bold AND, it means you have to have those two points to be able to qualify for a single mark. Another thing to pay attention to, and the mark scheme does draw attention to this, is the marking of lists. So if you've given more than one answer in response to the available marks, so for example, if it's a two mark question and you've provided four responses just to kind of hedge your bets and because you're not too sure on the ones that you've given, this can actually end up in you losing marks. So any errors that you've made in your extra responses will actually negate any correct marks that you would have earned. I know that in the AQA mark schemes they have a rule that right and wrong is wrong. So if you've given a correct answer and then followed up by an extra incorrect answer, then it's just a lost mark. So when it comes to calculations then, moving through the mark scheme, you want to check to see if you will be rewarded marks for showing your working out. If the question says show your working, or it says justify your answer, then show working out. This is why it is so important to show your working out clearly, because by showing that process, whether it's a certain type of calculation you have to do or a certain formula that you've used, if you've shown this off, then you can still get marks. There's also the case of errors being carried forward. So if you had to do a calculation to give a certain answer, and then you had to use that answer to go on to answer further questions, if you got the methodology right in each of the calculations, you can still get marks, even if the error was carried forward. In the mark scheme, this is usually indicated by ECF notation. So when you're marking yourself and you see ECF, um, it means that you can usually still pick up some marks. So moving on from calculations to written responses, a golden rule that kind of makes it clear for the examiner and is something that's mentioned in mark schemes is the use of the word it. Try to avoid using the term it in your answers unless you can make it super duper clear what it means. This is clarity in your response. So if you're writing it in a sentence and the examiner's kind of lost your train of thought or lost what you're kind of going for with your response and they won't give you the answer, even if in your head you are writing about the right thing. So if it isn't descriptive enough, if it isn't abundantly clear what you're talking about, 
don't use the word it. Another part of your written response that needs to be absolutely clear is your spelling, especially when you are spelling out scientific or technical terms. In some cases, you might have to have that specific word to be able to get the mark. This is where we go back to that bold and. So if you've written about a certain thing, and included that key term, then you get the mark. This is just something to emphasize in your revision, especially if you know that you struggle with spelling anyway when it comes to writing out responses to exam questions. So something that I want to clear up that I read about a lot online is people recommending that you learn the mark scheme. Now I kind of get where they're going with this recommendation, but the way that they've worded it isn't quite correct. So if you're in year 12 and you're thinking, I need to start spending time learning the mark schemes to each of my subjects. This isn't entirely true. Instead, it's more about familiarizing yourself with the processes that lay behind the mark criteria. The more time you spend practicing past papers and the more time you spend looking at mark schemes and really having a comparison between the mark scheme and the questions so that you can see why marks are allocated the way they are is the best way to learn the mark scheme. Again, there is no hack to being able to absolutely nail your exams. It's just a case of knowing your subject content and doing enough past paper practice that any exam question that comes up won't completely freak you out. If you've never looked at a mark scheme before, then please go now and have a look at one in detail. Just sit and read, especially those first few pages, which are just packed with information. It's not the most thrilling read. Um, it's pitched at the examiner, not so much at students using it, but it is such a gold mine of information. You need to start using it, especially now with exams coming up, they're very close. So get on to mark schemes. Now a second document, which you might be completely overseeing in your past paper practice is the examiner's report. Now using the examiner's report is going to make such a big difference to you, especially if you find the mark scheme a bit boring to go through. So for every exam paper that's been sat by students, there's an examiner's report. And what this is, is basically a collective of feedback from examiners about how students tackled each question in the paper. It opens with general comments about the way that students manage to answer questions before or delving into a little bit more detail in each individual question. It's so, so useful. So again, like the mark scheme, this document isn't really pitched at students, it's more pitched at teachers who can then use this resource to kind of inform their teaching so that students don't make the same mistakes as they did the year before in the next set of exams. But it is super duper easy to read through as a student. You can find examiner's reports in the same place that you would find past papers and mark schemes. So just kind of have a look on your exam board website. If you can't find it, then just search the keywords examiner's report related to your A-level subject and the past paper that you're taking. And really it's up to you whether you want to read this before sitting the past paper or doing it afterwards. There isn't a technical tip that I can give for using examiner's reports other than just use them, read through them and make sure that you take account of what the examiners are saying about how students are answering questions. It is by no means a way of predicting uh, future exam questions, but it is a good idea to have a look at it to see what students typically struggle with, because this could be something that the exam board wants to test again in future exams. So incorporating the mark scheme then and the examiner's report into your past paper practice will really elevate it. And hopefully it will remove any frustrations that you're having when you sit exam papers. So if you find that you constantly make the same mistakes, or if there's a certain style of question that you just cannot get a grip on, use both of these resources together because it will clear it up for you. To be honest, you should see results pretty quickly from using these two resources. Once you've started using them, you will notice that you kind of have a much better sense of how the exam works and what you need to be giving the examiner to get all of the marks you possibly can. So for the next video and for the final video in the past paper practice series, I'm going to be giving you a sample revision timetable which builds in past paper practice that you can take and adapt and use how you would like. As ever, if you are not subscribed to Snap Revise, you can do that just here and stay up to date with some of our videos which help you with your revision like this one.